finally, I want to discuss the concept of inter-VLAN routing. Why do we need inter-VLAN routing? So if you guys remember, why do we create VLANs to begin with? Well, we want to reduce the scope of the broadcast domains, right? You want to isolate subnets. By default, stuff in one VLAN cannot talk to another VLAN. We know that. Well, if that is the case, then how do we allow two different devices that are part of two different VLANs to talk to each other? Well, we have to introduce a layer three device in the middle. That's what's called inter-VLAN routing. There are multiple ways of accomplishing this task, though. Three particular elements I want to bring to your attention. Option A is where we have physically dedicated links between our switch and router for each VLAN. So each VLAN is a separate interface. Now, it's not a great design in a sense that you're burning up and using way too many ports on your switches and on your routers. And in a typical environment, in a corporate environment, you'll see dozens of VLANs, if not hundreds, you'll see dozens of VLANs configured. So this could get ugly pretty quickly. So typically in real world, you won't see this being utilized much unless you have a very cornered case scenario where you're forced to use something like this you're not gonna see this. What you see in real world utilized mostly is option C. But before I get to option C, let me quickly touch base on option B because this is also very heavily utilized in the traditional networking. And that is a single physical link between the switch and a router. And we actually make this a trunk link. Now I know so far we have discussed that a trunk link is a link that's between two switches. Here we have a router on one side and a switch on the other side. What are we talking about? Well, what we do here in this instance is we specify different VLANs that are allowed across this link. And we have to do some special configuration on the router, which is called router on a stick configuration to allow for those VLANs to be processed separately on this router. And we'll talk through those details momentarily. But what we mostly see in the real world today is if you have a multi-layer switch, which are most of the newer switches are multi-layer switches, we actually have SVIs configured, which are called SVIs or switch virtual interface configured. And the inner VLAN routing happens right on that switch. It, the traffic doesn't have to leave the switch and go through a different device. It all happens here. It's all about speed, efficiency, and low latency. That's the beauty of the multi-layer switch. And that's why most of the real world environments that you'll see today have option C configured. Now let's quickly talk through the router on a stick scenario. So what is it? So like I said, it's a legacy type of thing. If you're stuck with a layer two switch, then this is the only way to do it. Right, but there's a couple of drawbacks. Here we have a single point of failure. As you can see in the design here, this is a single point of failure. If this goes down, that's it, we're toast. Introduces latency and delay. So if this thing is choked, if there's too much traffic going across it, packets will get delayed. Buffering becomes a challenging thing. This becomes a bottleneck. So like I said, this is more of a legacy type concept but it's still there and in some networks you have to use it to be able to get the job done. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.